Hello everyone and welcome, it's Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel. Right, so thanks for coming back first of all. Um, today's video is all about an understairs unit. Um, it's relatively small, about a metre wide, metre high triangle. It's going to have one drawer, it's going to be a giant drawer, it's going to be taken by these giant runners here, these GTV 800mm chunky heavy duty runners. So this is what we are trying to achieve today, okay? We've got one drawer with a shelf in, and this is the framework. This is the existing wall and the new post of the staircase, and this is the returning wall here, okay? So for this actual carcass, it's very simple. It's just a side, um, a top or an angle top, another smaller side and a bottom, okay? And we've got the backing as well. The, the backing plays an important role um, in this carcass because it's going to make it into a solid rigid triangle box as such. Looking at the drawer itself, we've got a side here and we've got another side here, all rebated by the way, and then we've got a front and a back which is this shape, okay, but they're going in between the two sides because the fascia will then cover. You can see the dotted lines here, okay, so the dotted line represents the actual drawer fascia. So that is stepped in three mil from inside the carcass on the left hand side, the top and the right hand side, which means that when we put these trims on, these trims are going to be flush with the carcass. OK, so when we make them flush, we're making that three mil gap between the fascia and the trims by stepping that fascia in on the inside of the carcass inside. Right, so we decided that the drawer didn't need to point in it, I just squared it off, there's no point. So it's obviously going to be open from this side here. This angle part of the drawer is going to be the open part, so when you open it, that is going to be your access. There's enough of a side here to take these giant runners. These giant runners, I say, they are pretty chunky. They are 55 wide, okay, not the standard 44. They are pretty heavy duty. Let's have a look at the profile. Really beefy. And the steel is thicker, everything is bigger about these than the standard 45 height runners. So this is one of the components, all right, so this is showing you the rebate and it's going to accept the bottom of the drawer. Six mil is absolutely fine. We are going to glue and pump in loads of pins and loads of 30 mil screws, so it's not going anywhere at all. It's going to be nice and strong. No need to go any thicker, it's not carrying heavy, heavy stuff, it's just shoes. I always find the best way of designing these is SketchUp. So if I click on the Orbit tool, you can move it around and stuff like that. So yeah, um, going over the design once more, as you can see, we have got this post here, okay? So over here is representing the new post. So there's only 36 mil rebate there, or step back, shall I say. So we've gone for 25 mil trims with 18 mil fascias. So we've got enough distance here for the trims to fit in because obviously this, this trim is going to wrap round and down. So Sean's starting to assemble this now. So this is the left hand side. So that we're going to have a bottom going in there in just a moment. As you can see, we've got biscuit slots and everything that we do kind of put together. We use biscuits just to line up. We just thought three is fine. Then we come down 50 for a screw and then center of the two biscuits for a screw, center of the two, two biscuits for a screw and then 50 mil up. So that's how we're joining up and the bottom will have biscuit slots too. So that is the bottom and the side. Okay, so this isn't painted this side, but the bottom is and we'll get to that in just a bit. Um, we've got a little rebate down at the bottom and um, it's all down to the trim thicknesses and the thickness of that new post that's sticking out that determine this detail. Again, we will go over that a little bit later. So now we can just spin this around and just get that small side on here. Same way, just get those biscuits in and pump those screws in. Screw things together. We're using a three mil drill bit to pre-drill. So this is what it looks like from the back. Sean's just pumping in those screws, pre-drilling with a three mil drill bit. So Sean's done that now. He's picking up the backing. Say hello, Sean. Hello, everyone. Right, so we're going to spin that around. Let's get that backing in. What we are going to do first, we never usually do this. We usually get the top in, but we just thought, well, it's a little brainwave. Why don't we just get that backing on right now? 
Um, it holds everything nice and rigid and it'll just then help us with the top afterwards. We don't generally assemble anything before we leave, but we thought with this unit we can make everything, especially the drawer, fix the runners on, just get it one whole working unit. And then when we go on site, we can just put the bearers down, slip it in, trims, fascia, done. I'm gonna square this bottom up first, gonna get two screws in there, then we'll work up, work across and up on that side and then we'll be ready for the top. Just using 30 mils and pre-drilling um, the length of a 30 mil screw also with a three mil drill bit. So come about 100 mil up, we're gonna put loads of screws in here. Pre-drill with a three mil. Pump that screw in. Lovely, I'm just gonna continue that. Sean just saw the post I put on Instagram of me making them teas by the way, hence the reason we're cracking up. Um, anyway. There we go, more proof that he's got the best boss in the world. Here we go, we've got the backing done, enough screws in there, don't skimp on the screws, so they don't cost a lot of money. So now we've got that done, let's go around the other side and show you the front. What we're going to do is lay it on its back now, we're going to tip it back to then get this um, angle top on a lot easier. Yeah, so we're at 43 and a half thousand subscribers. Thank you so much. It means massive, massive amount to me. Um, if you want to see that number grow, you want to see the channel grow, you like the content, feel free to like and subscribe. Also, if you want to support the channel, we've got a Patreon or a YouTube membership where you can get a few perks, a few other bits and pieces, and priority replies to your messages. Cheers, guys. Delivery. That's it. That angle should slip inside, like so. And then that one should go inside. There we go. So we've got the angle inside there, and then we've got the angle inside there. So. Yeah, it's nice now. If you have a look here, if we look from the side, it's nicely lined up. So we can then just simply pitch screw through, get as many as we can in, maybe put a couple at the top and we might get, I don't know, six or seven in each. And then we can stand it up, get the screws into um, through the backing. And this is what we've got so far. This is the way it butts up here. And the same over that side. We're on the runners now and they are absolutely giant. Let's have a look, Sean. Absolutely huge. But we're feeling these. I mean, even the construction there, the way that part of the runner has got the bends in it just to take the load, all the ball bearings. These are absolute beasts. So they are going in now. So what we're going to do first, split them apart. We've only got two pairs out. We've got more in stock. So this is the thinner part. Even this, look at the profile there. It's probably two and a bit more thick still. So yeah, we're going to get the fat parts on the carcass and the thin parts on the draw. And the view from around back. Again, it doesn't necessarily look pretty, but it's absolutely solid. Loads of screws in the backing. This is the runner going in. They are 10 mil from the bottom. Okay, 10 mil up. And we're making it flush with this part of the carcass. Draw runners are now fitted in place. As you can see, they are 800 long. They are all the way to the end. Uh, we made these carcasses 805 deep, so the whole draw should come out. So now the carcass is assembled. We're going to be moving on to the draw. So now the assembly of the draw is happening. So this is the front, okay? And if we look round, we can see the biscuit slots for the shelf that's going in. We've got biscuit slots here for this other back. Um, this front was biscuited in, so this component here, which is the side, have biscuit slots on both sides and for the shelf. Um, they have all got rebates at the bottom to accept the bottom, which is 6 mil. This is the back, again, rebate at the bottom. So I guess first things first is just screwing the front to the side. Same technique really, we're just using a 3 mil drill bit, 50 mil screws. As this is the front, obviously we designed it so the end grain of the side runs through because we've got a fascia going on the front. That fascia will hide all the screws which are screwing the shelves on. You see extra holes here also. Um, we've planned quite a few screws to hold this fascia on. They're gonna be screwed in from the inside. Once the drawer is complete, it's fitted and we're lining up the fascia on the side. So I'm about to get this shelf in now and just show how we're gonna slot it in. I'm going to slot it in like so. Sean's going to hold it and I'm going to screw it all the other way around. But yeah, we should just be able to slip it in place like so. Lovely jubbly. So this is showing the detail. We decided not to try and make it 
angles here. We just decided to make a square cut. Firstly, it makes it easier. I think it's a nicer detail, to be honest. Um, yeah, we could have just carried the angle on, but then we would have had to match it up. Um, just a nice square cut is pretty cool. go oh there we go we are looking from the side so as the drawer opens like this is how you're going to access the drawer Sean turn that off <laughs> you see I had a roofer yeah. Ryan the roofer <laughs> yeah Sean just texted on his lunch Ryan the roofer he's got such a great name <laughs> Same method, pre-drill, the three mil, 50s. All done now, barring of the left-hand side. This is how you're going to look at it, all right? So that is how it's gonna pull out. And that's where the fascia is gonna be on the front. Sean is now just gluing up and screwing this right-hand side. We've decided not to carry the angle on as well. Um, no need to. I think it looks a little bit better for it this way. Um, so Sean is gonna glue that. Again, pre-drill, screw. Yeah, there's no space for biscuits, hence the reason there's two screws and he's going to put a lot of glue in there. So it's taking shape. So now to do the bottom, you can see all the rebates now. So the reason of a rebate is to hide the edge of the bottom as it sits in and um, we're not going to worry about that because remember there's a fascia covering this so you don't see that hence the reason it's run through and it's not stopped rebate but that is the main reason for a rebate is so when that slips in it's seamless from the sides yeah so we're just going to put a little bead of glue just to be safe so we're just going to not overdo it we don't want it squidging out on the inside now let's get this bottom in and the great thing about Bottoms is that it squares the workpiece up at the same time. Let's see how tight a fit we can get. A nice tight fit would be lovely. Oh, it's nice when that happens on camera. Perfect. So that's going to square the drawer up for us. So there, there we're just going to do what we do on our wardrobes. We're just going to start from a corner, where whatever corner you want, get two in, work across, then work up, and then just fill in the rest. So we're having a debate on whether we need to countersink <laughs> the, the, the screws. At the end of the day, it's right at the bottom of the drawer. Um, backings, we never countersink. It's pointless. And the drawer is going to be like 50 mil off the floor. So if you wanted to, you can use a countersink bit. We're just using a 3 mil drill bit. The head's not going to be 100% completely sunk in, but we're fine with that. We're going to be using these um, Timberfix 4x30 screws. Um, again, just pre drilling um, enough for that screw to go in so we're not splitting away the material. It's going to carry on now, finish that off. Let me get the drawer runners on. But the small part of the runner is on now, obviously this is the front. So we've made the small part of the runner flush with the front because the bigger part of the runner is flush with the bottom of this carcass. Again, we will show you the difference and why we've got that step a little bit later. It's down to the trims. These runners are a little different from the standard ones, aren't they? Yeah, they're on the counter Yeah, the metals, the flat. exactly. Yeah, so they're actually nice and flush, but we just got in as many as we could, all 20s. Say hello. But it's in the workshop. So we made this drawer a little bit less deep than the carcass. As you can see here, these runners extend 780, so they're 20 mil. The drawer is 20 mil short. It makes no difference. It just means that if something got stuck behind the drawer, we've got 20 mil void. Hello, little man. Can you say, can I give you a line? Can you say like and subscribe? Say like and subscribe. Bye, guys. Right. and join our membership.
No, not that one. So, are you going to say? Yes. Please. Sean, are we at the stage of fitting the draw into the carcass? Yes. Yes, we are. Yes, it's the wrong way around there. I don't think that shape will go in that shape. Some Something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh good I wonder if that's going to make the cut that might not make the cut so we're going to literally spin it round get it in Bertie do you want to do some filming mm -hmm. there we go nice and gently alright so are you going to film us getting it in alright come then Sean let's see if we can do it under pressure here um, how are we going to do this you get that side I get this yeah. side yeah. okay we should have moved literally everything out of the way first. Okay, ready? We're going to line it up. Line your prongs up, Sean. Yours lined up. Yeah. Oh, hey. And give it a little push. Two clicks usually, isn't it? Yeah. Pull it out again. Oh, yeah, it's the grease. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Oh, hey. Wow, that's a big draw. Let's see if it holds itself up. No hands. Cheers, boys. Bye. Enjoy your football. Hopefully you saw that, because my nine-year-old was filming. But that is basically the gist of it. Okay. What do you think this felt like? 20-something kilos? Were we carrying 10 each? Less? Yeah, a little bit less. 15? 15. So this was roughly about 15 kilos, plus it's loaded up. By the time it's loaded up, you know, there is, it is quite tough and durable. Well, yeah, it does feel like it's going to take a lot more weight, shall I say. I feel like they're going to take a lot more. I should really look in the specs and um, see what they do take. I'll hopefully I'll leave a link in the description for these. Um, apparently, they're meant to be used for steps and all sorts of stuff where you can stand on them and it will take your weight. Not 100% sure about that, depending how big you are. Uh -huh. So when we get on site, what we are going to do, let's see if I can rig something up to show you, okay? Imagine this is the fascia, um, the draw front, and these are the trims, okay? So the trims are all 25 mil thick. The fascia is also 24, 25, yeah. because it's made up of a piece of 18 mil with 6 mil add-on strips. So slightly less, probably about a mil less. What we have tried to do is step that back ever so slightly, okay? So that draw runner is step back five mil, which means that there's a five mil difference between the two planes, the two faces, the face of the trim and the face of the fascia, because they're the same thickness. So that's why we have stepped that back. Also, this is the detail. We are making the trims flush like so in line with the inside, for the two sides, this side and this side, and the top. The only difference is that the bottom is sailing past. It's sailing past to the bottom of the carcass with that detail on the side all the way down and sailing past. So the reason behind that is because we kind of like the detail where our, our plinth detail is flush with the bottom like so. And then this side trim is going to run all the way down like so and give that detail. I, I kind of like that look of the step back detail at the bottom. The plimp to me should always be in unless you're going for like a skirting effect or a molded effect detail at the bottom. But the difference between here and here is basically because the fascia and the trim are the same thickness. We just didn't want them to be completely flat like so. One other reason why we kind of left it sailing past at the bottom, there was two reasons, is that imagine these were our trims. We've got that triangle there, okay? Imagine we want to play around with the height of this fascia to get our three more gaps right all along this edge and this edge when it comes to pushing that fascia in. If there is any discrepancies anywhere and we've got that trim at the bottom, there is no moving this up and down to sort of like fiddle around with these two gaps. So that was another reason why this fascia is sailing past. So if we needed to create more of a three mil gap here between the trims and the fascia, we can just drop that down ever so slightly, a mil, half a mil, whatever we need to create that illusion or that three mil gap at the top. Just before I go, this is the final touch. This is the fascia here, okay? And these are our trims, so they're painting on one edge. So let's put one up against here. So this is what it's gonna look like here. And they are simply gonna be glued on, on site. 
roughly like so as you can see we've got a three mil gap on the top if you come around to the side sean we got roughly a three mil gap there okay i'm just holding it roughly in place you can have a look around and on that side too and at the bottom also and you can see it's near enough flush with the bottom of the carcass too so that is our detail there we just need to wrap the facial around with the trims and step back that um, bottom plimp detail to be flush with the carcass so i hope you enjoyed this one there is going to be part two hopefully if the customer allows us to film um fitting it shouldn't be a long one because most of the work is done imagine having to do that on site is going to be a bit tricky it's taken us about three or four hours to film and to assemble and put all this together for you right now hopefully it's going to be sort of like a one o'clock finish eight to one to get this finished on site so there we go guys all done i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did making it so it's all gone now already been fitted but before you go can you do me one favor can you leave a comment in the comments bar below let me know if you want to see this one being fitted if so then i will make sure that is next friday's video for you so apart from that guys that's all i need to say feel free to like subscribe and join our membership thanks for watching have a great friday see you next friday take it easy ciao for now